Hello students, I am Dinesh Odapi. This is session 18 of Molecular Biology, Evolution and Ethology paper. In this session, we will continue with the study of immunology topic. And in this session, particularly we are going to study about humoral and cell mediated immunity. Now before we can understand uh, the humoral and uh, uh, humoral and cell mediated immunity, let us get familiarize ourselves with the lymphoid organs present in our body. Now, like other organ systems of our body, we have immune system. So this immune system is made up of organs called lymphoid organs. The lymphoid organs are divided into two types, primary lymphoid organs and peripheral or secondary lymphoid organs. The primary lymphoid organs found in the body are thymus, bursa of Fabricius and bone marrow. Now thymus and bone marrow are found in human beings whereas the bursa of Fabricius is the organ, the lymphoid organ found in the bird. These organs, thymus and bone marrow are considered as primary lymphoid organs because uh, these are the sites of lymphopoiesis. That means the lymph uh, cells, the cells associated with the immune system they are produced in these organs. Therefore, they are considered as primary lymphoid organs. The peripheral lymphoid organs include lymph nodes which are situated in different parts of the body, then spleen, then gut associated lymphoid tissue, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, etc. So these are considered as peripheral lymphoid organs because here the lymph cells are not synthesized. So the uh, immune cells, the cells associated with the immune system are produced in the primary lymphoid organs. They migrate to the secondary or peripheral lymphoid organs where they get matured or they get activated. So that's why uh, they are called peripheral lymphoid organs. So uh, these are the primary and peripheral lymphoid organs found in our body. The immune system of our body is represented by the lymphatic system which includes the lymphoid organs, lymph nodes and the lymph which is the body fluid in which the cells associated with immune system uh, circulate. So this is the chart or uh, this is a diagram showing some differences between the primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs. I already uh, mentioned about the primary and secondary lymphoid organs and their characteristics. Let us see the cells associated with immune system. Bone marrow is the site where the cells are produced. In the bone marrow, we find the multipotent hematopoietic stem cell. So this is the source cell for all kinds of immune system cells. This produces two lineages. I mean two kinds of uh, cells are produced. So one type we call it as myeloid stem cell and another one is lymphoid stem cell. Myeloid stem cell in turn is going to produce the platelets, erythrocytes, red blood corpuscles, basophil, neutrophil, eosinophil and the macrophages. So the myeloid stem cell is responsible for the formation of these cells which are associated with immune system, the platelets, erythrocytes, basophil, neutrophil, eosinophil and macrophages. And the other uh, line of the cell that is the lymphoid stem cell, this will uh, get converted into lymphoblast which will produce two types in the beginning. One is uh, going to become the natural killer cell which is a very large granular lymphocyte which is capable of phagocytosizing the pathogens. And another line which is a small lymphocyte, it will divide into T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. Uh, later, we will understand the role of T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes in the immune response. B lymphocyte will give rise to the plasma cells and these plasma cells are the ones which are going to produce the antibodies. Now that's about the cells associated with our immune system. We are supposed to study two types of immune responses. One is the humoral 
immune system or humoral immune response and the other one is cell mediated immune response. In general, we can call it as humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity. That means whenever we get infected, our body is going to show immune response and the immune response may be either humoral immune response or the cell mediated immune response. Let us understand what is the difference between these two kinds of immune response. First, let us start uh, with the study of humoral immunity. When a pathogen enters the body, the immune system shows immune response, which we already understood in a previous session only. The antigen or the antigen on the pathogen is recognized by some cells of the immune system. Once the pathogen is recognized, specific B cells are going to be activated and these activated B cells multiply in very large number and then these B cells now we call them as plasma cells and these plasma cells start producing start synthesizing and secreting specific antibodies against the pathogen which has infected the body so these specific antibodies will go and bind to the antigen or the pathogen which has entered into the body and by different mechanisms these antibodies are going to destroy the pathogen so this kind of immunity which is attained by the production of antibodies is called humoral immunity now remember humoral immunity is the principal defense mechanism against the extracellular microbes now uh, the bacterial infection uh, and other kind of infections are mainly responded with humoral type of immune response by the body which it is very effective once the body starts synthesizing specific antibodies they are going to destroy the pathogen or the specific antigen and thus they are going to protect the body against the disease which is going to be caused by that particular pathogen here uh, let us try to understand the same step by step what happens in the humoral type of immunity step one a macrophage engulfs the pathogen once the pathogen enters into the body normally it is going to enter into the body fluids or into the blood and this pathogen is identified by the macrophage and macrophage is going to engulf it it is going to uh, phagocytosize that particular pathogen step 2 the macrophage then digests the bacterium and presents the pathogens antigens what happens the macrophage will engulf the pathogen it will destroy it it will digest it and the specific antigens of that particular pathogen are going to be presented on its surface now the macrophage is going to present those antigens on its surface a t helper cell binds to the macrophage and becomes an activated t helper cell there is another kind of cell called t helper cell so this t helper cell will now attach uh, attach itself with the macrophage which has digested the pathogen and uh, which is carrying the antigens on its surface once the t helper cell binds with such macrophages the t helper cell becomes activated the activated t helper cell binds to a b cell in order to activate the b cell the activated t helper cell will go and bind with a B cell. Now remember, uh, this process is little bit complicated because in the body fluid, there are so many different kinds of B cells. I mean, the cells, B cells, which are specific. The T helper cell will go and bind with the most suitable B uh, cell. And uh, this process will activate the B cells. Now, once the B cell receives the antigen from the uh, T helper cell, it starts proliferating, it starts multiplying in very large number. 
Now these activated B cells turn, they get differentiated into plasma cells and uh, these plasma cells are released into the blood and the plasma cells start secreting specific antibodies against the pathogen's antigen. In the last step, the plasma cells secrete antibodies and antibodies are going to destroy the pathogen. This is about the humoral type of immunity. Uh, in the first infection, this response is little bit slow. But if the same pathogen infects the person for the second time, the immune response will be very quick. That's about uh, the different steps of humoral immunity. With this diagram, let us just try to understand what we already uh, studied, the humoral immunity. This is the antigen presenting cell. Now, what is the antigen presenting cell? The macrophage which has digested the pathogen and which is carrying the antigen on its surface. And uh, the T helper cell now binds with this antigen presenting cell. In the next step, activated T helper cell interact with B cells via CD40 ligand, activating B cells to proliferate, differentiate and secrete antibodies. In the third step, what happens? The activated B cell, this is the B cell and activated T helper cell is now bound to the B cell. This B cell gets activated, turns itself into a plasma cell, it multiplies and then it starts producing specific antibodies against the pathogen. Here you can see the process of formation of antibodies, large number of antibodies are produced against the pathogen. Here, one very important thing we have to understand. There is a disease, there is a uh, syndrome called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. All of you are familiar with AIDS. In AIDS, what happens? Why AIDS is a deadly condition? Whenever a pathogen enters into the body, the pathogen is going to be identified by our immune cell and the immune, uh, immune system and immune system is going to react by producing the antibodies are directly going to attack with the cells. How it happens? This is the first step. This first step is very important. Identification of the pathogen and passing that information to the B cells which are going to produce the weapons against the pathogen. Just imagine a situation where T helper cells are destroyed. What happens if T helper cells doesn't go and bind with the antigen presenting cell? They will not pass on the information to the B cell. This B cell is capable of producing antibodies, but it will do that work. It will start producing antibodies only after receiving information from the helper T cell. So the role of helper T cell is very, very important in the immune response. If helper T cell is destroyed, then there is no immune response. Now that is what is done by HIV, the human immunodeficiency syndrome virus. HIV is not going to destroy any organ in our body directly. It is not going to affect liver, eye, kidney, pancreas, etc. HIV will go and destroy the T helper cells. It is like killing the messenger who is going to alert the soldiers. Once the T helper cells are destroyed, the immune system will not respond. After the infection of HIV and destruction of T helper cells, suppose a bacteria causing another disease enters into the body, the immune system will not respond and therefore the person goes on getting secondary infections. So that is how the T helper cells, of course, each and every cell in the immune system is important. It is like a chain event. So all the cells play important role and all the cells must work together to show a proper immune system, immune response. Humoral mediated immunity by the production of specific antibodies. 
let us try to understand something called primary immune response and secondary immune response. Imagine a situation where the person is infected. What happens? His immune system responds. If the person is infected by a pathogen for the first time, the immune response will be slow because it takes time. The pathogen has to be identified, T helper cells are going to be activated, the T helper cell will activate B cell, B cells will start producing the antibodies, it will take some time and the person will suffer from symptoms, the person will suffer from uh, disease during this particular period. Once the immune response starts, he gets cured. If the pathogen is very virulent, if it is very dangerous, it may cause some damage or it may lead to the death of the person before the immune response is completed. Here in this chart, you can see this is the primary infection, uh, the infection for the first time. The first infection starts here. This is the time. Time is shown on the x-axis and concentration of antibodies, the amount of antibodies produced in the body, uh, in the blood uh, is shown on the y-axis. Here you can see this is the point of infection and uh, you don't find any antibodies for some time. So the person is infected and he starts showing symptoms and antibodies are not produced. After some time, the immune system starts responding and slowly there is an increase in the amount of uh, antibodies. So this is the peak of antibodies in the first infection. And we consider, uh, we, uh, we call it as lag phase, log phase and plateau phase. So this is the lag phase and this is the log phase where there is a uh, gradual increase in the amount of antibodies. And this is the plateau phase. Plateau means uh, it becomes stabilized, that is the highest point. And again, here at this point, the person gets cured. And uh, once the person gets cured uh, from the disease, the number of antibodies again becomes less. It gets declined and we call it as decline phase. Now just imagine after, su after some time, it may be after one week, two week or many months or many years. If the person is infected for the second time, the immune response is very quick. Here you can see the difference between the first phase curve and the second phase curve. The lag phase is very steep and it is very short. Within a short period of time, the body is going to produce very high number of antibodies. You just compare it with the first infection. This is the highest number of antibodies produced in the first infection. And uh, this is the amount of antibodies produced in the second infection by the same pathogen. So in the second infection, the person is not going to show any symptoms. He is not going to suffer from the disease. The immune system will destroy the pathogen in a short period of time. And again, it will decline after attaining the plateau. And after second infection, the curve will not go below this first point. Now, how it is possible? It is possible because of the <clears throat> formation of memory cells. When the person is infected for the first time and antibodies are produced, some cells, some B cells are going to be uh, retained in the body as memory cells. So they will remember the pathogen. And if the same pathogen infects the person for the second time, they will not uh, have to pass from, uh, pass from step one to step six. So they will directly go to the last step of producing antibodies directly from the plasma cells. So that's how the secondary immune response is important. Now this logic is uh, applicable in the vaccination program. Now you know that most of the vaccines have the first dose and the secondary dose. Second dose is also called booster dose. Now why they give two doses of a particular vaccine. You consider the first dose as the first infection. When you take the vaccination, uh, I mean, when you take the first dose of the vaccination, your body shows the primary immune response, which is very little. And after some time, 
you are going to take the second dose. So this is the point of second infection and in case of vaccination, this is the point of second dose. So second dose is going to give you the maximum protection and the correct protection against the future infection. So therefore, taking both the doses is essential. If you take only one dose of a vaccine, it's of no use because after some time, if the memory cells are uh, gone from the blood circulation, it is not going to give any future protection. So this is about the primary immune response and secondary immune response concept. I hope you understood uh, the humoral mediated immunity concept. Now let us move on to the cell mediated immunity. Uh, this is another type of immune response shown by the body. Presentation of uh, here we will study the steps of cell mediated immunity. Presentation of foreign antigen by antigen producing cells to T lymphocyte. The antigen presenting cells present the foreign antigen to the T lymphocytes. In humoral mediated immunity what happens? The T cell is going to, the helper T cell is going to present the antigen to the B cells which will get converted into a plasma cell pro to produce antibody. Here in this case the antigen presenting cell is presenting the antigen to a T lymphocyte. These cells recognize foreign antigen with the help of receptors present on the surface. The T cells are now sensitized and they undergo blast transformation, clonal proliferation and differentiation into memory cells and effector cells like Th, Tc, Td and Ts cells. Once the T helper, uh, once the T cell sensitizes, uh, gets sensitized by getting the antigen, it will multiply in large number. So large number of sensitized T cells are produced and uh, it will modify itself. It will differentiate itself into different kinds of T cells. Now one line will become memory cells to remember the pathogen for future infections and other cells are going to be directly involved in the destruction of pathogens, the cells like Th, Tc, Td, Ts cells. The activated T lymphocytes now release lymphokines which are responsible for cell mediated immunity. This is the difference. Plasma cells uh, secrete antibodies in the humoral mediated immunity and here T lymphocytes release lymphokines which are responsible for cell mediated immunity. By this time, I hope you understood the major difference between humoral mediated cell immunity and cell mediated immunity. In the humoral mediated immunity, antibodies, B cells are involved which involves antibody production. In the cell mediated immunity, T cells are involved. In the next step, recognition of antigen by T cells, T cells recognize the foreign antigens when they are presented with MHC molecules. Remember this, T cells recognize the foreign antigens when they are presented with MHC molecules. Now what are these MHC molecules? Major histocompatibility complex molecules about which we will study in another session. Once the antigen is recognized, the T lymphocyte will get attached to the target cells. The T cell is directly going to get attached to the target pathogen cells. Then, release of cytokines by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. TC cells means cytotoxic T lymphocytes. The stimulated T cells release cytokines and it results in the lysis or breaking of the target cells. The cells are directly broken down by the action of cytokine enzymes. Once the target cell is destroyed, the T cell will attach to another target cell. A single T cell will go on killing large number of pathogens. So this is how the cell mediated immunity is going to destroy the pathogens and give protection against the disease or uh, infection. In this session, we understood two kinds of immune responses 
humoral mediated immunity and cell mediated immunity that's all for this session thank you